Hey guys, I'm Dr. Aaron Horshig, and today I'm gonna give you a dead bug tutorial with specific emphasis on what not to do. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today is all about the dead bug. Now, this is a common core stability exercise used to enhance stability for performance and also used in the rehab setting to help people who have poor core stability, potentially because of low back pain or in the rehab of low back pain. Now, one of the most common cues given for this exercise that I do not like for 99.9% .9 of people is to pull your belly button in and tuck your back to the floor, so flatten your back out. Now, here's why I don't like that. Your spine, whenever we're going through um, many different movements, a squat, a clean, a snatch, we wanna see a slight curvature. This is a neutral spine, okay? Now, whenever you are going through a squat, a deadlift, a clean, or a snatch, we don't want to tuck the butt under and we don't wanna flatten that out. We want that slight curvature in the low back, that braced neutral spine, to enhance your technique efficiency and it also, when you're breathing and bracing, enhances your intra-abdominal cavity pressure. So, first off, I don't wanna teach someone how to flatten their back out and pull their belly button in because that's not how we teach proper breathing, bracing, and positioning during our lifts. When I teach a squat, when I teach a deadlift, I want someone to maintain that neutral spine and breathe out and then brace over the top, create 360 degrees of stiffness, not tuck their butt under, not draw in. We do not teach a drawing in method when you're trying to lift heavy. So from a performance standpoint, this cue on the dead bug does not make sense. The second reason I don't like this cue to flatten the spine out to the ground is that it's a bad cue for someone who has back pain with a flexion intolerance, meaning the motion or posture of spinal flexion triggers their pain. Here's why. Doing this motion of pulling the belly button down and flattening the back is actually flexing their spine. It's tilting their pelvis under and it's flexing their spine. So why would I want to push into that specific same trigger? I don't. I want to maintain a neutral spine, brace over the top and teach them how to move about their arms and legs. So that's also going to be helpful in a rehab setting. Now, here's how you perform the dead bug. So this is my tutorial for this. We're gonna start in this position. Now, because Darren may not have the greatest sense of awareness for his spine, here's how you learn this while maintaining that proper neutral spine. I'm gonna have him take this hand and put it underneath his low back. That's going to give him that awareness of whether or not his spine is pushing down into his back, flexing, which again, we don't want, or if it's maintaining that slight arch, that's what we do want. I'm gonna have him take this other hand and he's gonna put his fingers right into the side, just to the lateral part of his six pack. Now in this position, he's gonna push in. From here, he's going to breathe and brace before any movement takes place. So he's going to breathe and expand laterally. So when he takes his breath, he's gonna feel his uh, hands push away. So we're not pushing straight out. He's expanding laterally. It's called a diaphragmatic breath. So breathe laterally, feel that expand, brace. Now from right there, he's maintaining a neutral spine. He's got good intra-abdominal cavity pressure. He's going to maintain that while he kicks out, controls, and back. Now his hand is under the low back so that if he defaults into a poor position and loses that neutral spine, he's gonna feel it. It, be, it. it creates a more sensory rich environment. So he's gonna kick out and back. Something like this, I would have him maybe do five to 10 reps on each side, okay? Now, step two with this is we can start moving some of the arms. So again, he's gonna maintain either his hand under his back, he's going to breathe and brace, tighten. Now he's gonna lift his hand up and he's gonna go opposite. He's gonna go arm, and leg kicking out again, hands underneath the low back so that he maintains that low back positioning. If he defaults into an anterior pelvic tilt and overextends, he'll feel it because that back will leave his hand. So this allows him to maintain that position, the awareness of his back very well. So again, something like that, we could do five in this direction and then he could switch hands, hand underneath this back, arm up. Okay, and let's again, let's make sure that we get the proper brace first. So hand here, again, breathe, expand laterally, stiffen. This is the exact same method we're using, whether he's squatting, deadlifting, doing a cleaner snatch. 
and then he's gonna raise that hand, okay? Opposites extend, control, and back. Excellent, so again, we would do five on this side. Now, how do we progress the dead bug? Eventually what we can do is have hands up, we can do the regular opposite arms, opposite legs. Again, now he has better awareness of his low back positioning. He can feel if he's moving and compensating into a more flexed or an overextended position because we've started well. Then I could even have him hold this, okay? Adding a little bit of load. We're just gonna move the legs now. So again, he's added extra load up here, making it a little bit more harder on his body to maintain that positioning. Something like this, he could do two sets of 10 reps. Very good. And then another progression we could do is we could take this, put it around the feet, and then from right here, arms up, now he can go opposites, and now he's kicking down here. This way we're adding a little bit of resistance to the lower body, again, enhancing the difficulty of the movement as a whole. So guys, this is the tutorial on performing the dead bug and specifically the emphasis on what not to do. We do not want to draw your belly button in and flatten your back out. Why? We want to make sure that we maintain a neutral spine. I'm not here to tell you to fear spinal flexion. That's not at all what we're trying to do with this, but I want you to become aware of why we give specific cues. I want to maintain a neutral spine because that's how we teach proper technique when it comes to a snatch, a clean, a squat, or deadlift. We wanna maintain that position, we wanna lock it in, and then we wanna move about the hips. So I don't wanna teach someone from a performance standpoint to round their lower back, and I also don't wanna teach someone how to brace by drawing in. You will not find a single elite lifter that draws in before they start performing any type of heavy lift. We brace out, we stiffen and then we move about the arms or legs. So let's make sure our core stability carries over to the type of movements that we're doing within the gym. Also, from a rehab perspective, a lot of people come to me with low back pain who are flexion intolerant. So in those cases, the last thing I wanna do is push them into a position where their low back is moving into more and more flexion. I wanna maintain that neutral spine and teach them how to stiffen in that position and avoid their triggers. Not that I wanna breed fear of flexion because your back should be able to bend. But early on in the rehab process, pushing into flexion will only worsen symptoms in many people and continue the injury process. So I hope this, guys, was helpful for you to learn this uh, very common core stability exercise. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you know anyone that has questions or uses this exercise and commonly that cue, send them this video and uh, generate a discussion on whether or not that's the most optimal cue for most people. Um, again, thank you guys so much for checking out this video by Squat University on our YouTube page. Um, Please subscribe to the channel if you're finding any of the videos that I give you of value. And until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos? These people have